Hi everyone, this is Miss Park, and this video we're going to review everything you always knew about uh, quadratic functions and maybe a bunch of stuff that you forgot. So we're just going to review everything we ever did with quadratics, uh, including algebra, including graphing, all that stuff in one video. So I will direct you to this uh, pages in the booklet called Review of Quadratic Functions Three Forms. This is actually a six page um, lesson. We're going to flip through it. Now, hopefully it won't be too bad because it's really just fill in the blanks. Okay, so follow along with me. If you are able to print this, awesome. And if you're not, um, then just take some notes on paper. Okay, so a blank, okay, a quadratic function. A quadratic function is a function that can be written in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a is not equal to zero. So remember from grade 10, um, quadratic functions have an x squared. Okay, so you can think of the, a square like a quad. A quad is another word for four, so that's why it's quadratic. So um, if the a, a coefficient was a zero, then you wouldn't have this x squared term, and you just have the bx plus c. Well, that would be a, a linear function. Okay, so a can equal zero, and some examples are y equals 5x squared, y equals negative 2x squared plus 7, y equals x squared minus x minus 3. They all have the highest, the term with the highest degree is a squared. Okay, and that's, that's where that is. The graph of a quadratic function is a U-shaped curve called a parabola. The maximum or minimum point, so the maximum or the minimum point is called the vertex. Okay, so identify the vertex of each graph and state the maximum or minimum, okay, and, and say which one it is. So the vertex is right here. That is the point one, negative two. Is it a maximum or a minimum? So maximum means the highest point, minimum means the lowest point. So it's a minimum. And the minimum value is the lowest possible y. So the, how low does this parabola go? It goes as low as negative 2. So that is the minimum value. It occurs when, when do you get this negative 2? Well, that happens when x is 1. Because the vertex is 1, negative 2. So the minimum value is negative 2. It occurs when x equals 1. Let's do it again. The vertex, in this case, is this point up here, is the point negative 2, 4. Right, here's your vertex right there. And is it a maximum or a minimum? Well, it's the highest point, so it's a maximum. The maximum value, how high does this parabola go? It goes up to 4. It occurs when x is negative 2. So that's some language. So let's go to this stuff in the box, a little bit of review. So when you have parabola in this um, form, we can read something from the direction of opening. So this one opens up and this one opens down, but something in the equation tells us about the direction of opening. And that is this a value, the coefficient of the x squared. So when the a is a positive number, the parabola opens, in which direction? Upward, okay? So like this. And when A is a negative number, I should write upward and downward. Okay, and the parabola opens like this. Okay, when this A value is less than one, and now it's not, it's a, I don't know if you know this absolute value, but absolute value of a is, is referring to the size of a, not just the number a. So let's say, for example, um, the absolute value of 5 is 5, but the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. It's just referring to the size of the number without the uh, sign. Think of it also as a distance from 0, right? 5 is 5 away from 0, negative 5 is also 5 away from 0, just in the other direction. So when the size of A, regardless of the sign, is less than 1, 
then what happens to the parabola? So if this is your basic parabola, y equals x squared, if I put a, a number that's less than one in front of it, like one half, y equals one half x squared, what would that parabola look like? So in the x squared, when you're calculating the y's, you're gonna get some number. But then if you multiply each of those y's by a half, and I get y equals one half x squared, what's gonna happen is the y's don't grow as quickly. They're only gonna be half as high. So for each x, you're only gonna go half as high. So what happens to the parabola? It's like somebody sitting on it. It can't, can't grow um, the same way that y equals x squared can. So if you're looking at the parabola and someone's been sitting on it, it's been compressed vertically, someone's sitting on it, then it looks wider than y equals x squared. And when the a value is exactly one or negative one, right, then the parabola is the same width as y equals x squared. It looks just like that, or it might look just like that one, but downwards, y equals negative x squared. Okay? And when the size of a is greater than one, so let's say I put a three x squared, y equals three x squared, what's it gonna look like? Well, now everything's growing faster. Everything's growing faster than y equals x squared. So here's my y equals 3x squared, because when you calculate your y, you're now going to multiply that value by 3. So it's going to be a really bigger value. All right, so when, a, when, the, when the size of a is greater than 1, the parabola is um, narrower than y equals x squared. Okay, axis of symmetry, what is that? So axis of symmetry is a vertical line that acts like a mirror. So here it is. Here's the axis of symmetry. It acts like a mirror. So you have symmetry. You have the parabola is the same on both sides of it. Okay. And then the maximum or minimum value. So we already talked about this. It's the highest or the lowest Y value. It's also the Y coordinate of the vertex, right? Notice if the vertex was negative two, four, the highest y is the 4. Okay. X-intercepts, they're also called zeros. They're the points where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And let's see here where they are here. So the x-intercepts, there'd be one over here, so that's maybe negative uh, half. And there's one here that's maybe around one, uh, two, uh, yeah, one and a half. No, two and a half. This is two and a half. Here you have them, one here and one here, x-intercepts. Okay. Um, and if you had an equation, how would you find the x-intercept? So let's say you had even an equation of a line. So let's say you had the equation of a line. All right, so how would you figure out the x and y-intercept? So the y-intercept you get when you're looking for points on the y-axis. So I'm looking for some point over here. I want to see where the graph crosses this y-axis. What I have to note is that any point on the y-axis is zero something. Zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, two and a half, right? So if I'm looking for a point on the y-axis, I know I'm looking for a point that has a zero as an x-coordinate. So to figure out the y-intercept, I sub in a zero into the equation and see what the matching y will be. Because that means that point zero y is on the line, uh, sorry, is on, is on the graph, and that will be your y-intercept. So, um, so to find the x-intercept, we're gonna make the y equal to zero, because if we wanna know where the graph crosses the x-axis, every point on the x-axis is something zero. Negative four zero, negative two zero, negative one zero, negative half zero, zero zero. So we'll sub in zero for the y and we'll find the matching x. So how do you get the x intercept? You sub in y equals zero and solve for x. There may be, how many x intercepts are there with a parabola? All right, so let's see, let me, let me draw a parabola. I can have a parabola that, that crosses the x-axis twice. 
Is there any other kind? Okay, I can have it sitting right on the x-axis, so the vertex is on the x-axis. Is there any other kind? Okay. I could also have it not cross the x-axis at all. So that means the, the vertex is somewhere and it's opening away from the x-axis, so it's never going to cross it. So how many x-intercepts? There could be 0, 1, or 2. Okay, the y-intercept is the point where the parabola crosses the y-axis. So we already talked about this. You sub in x equals 0 and solve for y. All right, so that is your introduction to review of quadratic functions. Let's look at another form of the parabola. So on the first page, we looked at the, ver the um, standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Here's our vertex form. Okay? And why was vertex form good? Because it tells us the vertex. All right. So let's fill in the table of values for the basic parabola y equals x squared. So if I'm just going to put in I'll just put in some values here. Okay, and so y equals x squared. We're going to take this number and square it. So negative 2 squared. So that's going to include the negative when we square it. So that's a 4. All right, negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared, and 1 squared, and 2 squared. Okay. This is a very important table. And you're going to need to know this table very, very well, because we're going to use it in many, many contexts uh, throughout the course. OK, so the graph of y equals a times x minus h squared plus k is the parabola y equals x squared with transformations. So something's happened to it. And this is where we need to try to remember from grade 10 what we learned about transformations. It may have. Um, it may not have stayed with you, it may have stayed with you. If we were in a class right now, we would all be kind of jogging our memory and coming up with ideas. Um, but since we're not, uh, I'll just remind you. So what happens is we took this x squared and we added variables and coefficients like all around it, all right? But each one of these, a, h, and k, has meaning. So what is the meaning? So you saw that when we had um, y equals x squared on the previous page, when I put an a value in front of it, it changed the shape. Okay, so what did this a value do? It either made the, the parabola stretched vertically, so like my pink one is stretched vertically, or it made it compressed vertically, like I'm sitting on it. Okay, and so in our class, we're always going to say stretched vertically. In the case of the pink one, we are stretched by a factor of three. And in the case of the green one, we are stretched by a factor of a half. Okay, so we're always going to use the word stretch. And the, fa the stretch factor is going to tell us whether the parabola is getting taller or it's not getting tall as quickly. All right, so we'll always use stretch. So... It is vertically stretched by a factor of a, and then translated. So translated means it moved. And so this h and this k, something, hap something happens with it. So I'll remind you that the vertex down here is hk. That's why we call this vertex form. So what does the h do and what does the k do? So let's take, for example, my plain old y equals x squared that sits over here. My vertex of that one is 0, 0. If I draw another parabola that's, say, down here, this is the point, I'll make something up, 5, negative 2. Okay. So the h is 5 and the k is negative 2. What has happened here is that the parabola has moved five units to the right and two units down. So what we're doing is we are translating h units right and k units up. 
why is it going up? Because when k is a negative number, uh, then it will be then it'll be down. If k was a positive number, it would be going up. And in terms of h, if h is a positive number, it would be going to the right, and if h is a negative number, it would be going to the left. So we just remember that h is horizontal, and it's always moving to the right because our numbers on the grid always go bigger as we move to the right, and k is always up, um, and because our because our numbers always go up uh, when you go up. <laughs> okay, the axis of symmetry is the line with the equation x equals something. So the axis at axis of symmetry of this y equals x squared is this vertical line, it's the y-axis, and it's the equation x equals zero. But what is the equation of this vertical line, which is the axis of symmetry for this one? All right, this is a vertical line that goes through where x is five. So this is the line x equals five. So the, the axis of symmetry is always going through the vertex, Therefore, the axis of symmetry is the line with the equation x equals h. All right, whatever the h is of the vertex, the axis of symmetry goes right through it. So it's the, it's the equation x equals h. And once again, the graph opens upward if a is greater than 0 and downward if a is less than 0. And I'm just going to add these absolute values because if A is negative, you would see it uh, opening downward. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's the wrong thing. That was stretch factor. <laughs> okay, this is good. This is good. My mistake. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, graphing from vertex form. So this may or may not be uh, familiar to you. Uh, hopefully, you've, you've all covered it. It's just a matter of how much do you remember right now. So. I'm going to teach you how to graph um, a, how to graph a quadratic function in vertex form. So we're going to remember for the first one that the vertex is one negative two, right? Vertex is h k. Uh, sorry, negative one negative two. The vertex is h k. But you'll notice that in the equation, it's the equation is x minus h. So if you see a plus here. That means what we're doing is x minus negative 1. That's how we're getting a plus there. So the h is negative 1. The k is always the number on the end because it's plus k. So our vertex is negative 1, negative 2. So I'm going to put that on, negative 1, negative 2. OK, so that's our first point. Now. There's nothing else helpful here, except that we can see the a value is not written, which means it's 1. That means the shape of this parabola here is exactly the same as the shape of the basic y equals x squared. The only difference is that the vertex is in a different place. So we can use this table to draw this parabola, okay, because it's the same, same shape, just in different location. So let's study the table. You see that in the original, you have 0, 0 is your vertex. And then you have a point that is 1, 1. So that means if you go to the right one unit from the vertex, you would go up 1. And then you have the point 2, 4, which means if you go 2 to the right, you would go up 4. And we have the same thing on the other side. If we go one to the left will go up one, and if we go two to the left, we'll go up four. All right, so those are these those are these points. Same parabola down here, different vertex. It means if I go one to the right from the vertex, if I go one to the right, I go up one. And if I go two from the vertex to the right, I'll go up four. All right, same thing on the other side. If I go one to the left, I go up one. And if I got two to the left, I go up four. And now, if I added more points here, so let's say I add negative three because I see my graph is big. So if I add some points here, so y equals x squared, this would be nine. This would also be nine. So let's practice. If I go three to the right from the vertex, I would, have a, I would go up nine. So I go right up to 7 here. 
And if I go three to the left from the vertex, I would also go up nine. And then I connect the dots, nice curvy shape. And I write the equation always near the arrowhead. Every time you graph something, if you have an equation, you write the equation. All right, and that's how you graph a parabola. Now this one, number two, has an A value, and there's a couple things. First of all, it has negative, which means we should expect the uh, parabola to open downward. The second thing is it has a one-third, and the one-third means the parabola is going to be wider than this one here. Okay, but we still start the same way as we say the vertex, HK, is 1, positive 1, and 5. So the vertex is 1, 5. I'm going to put it on. Right, now, here's the, here's the fun part. From the vertex, if I was to graph the regular parabola, I'd be going one to the right and one up. But instead, I'm going to go one to the right and head down. And because there's a one-third, it means instead of going one up, I'm going to go one-third of that height. All the y's are multiplied by a third. So I'm going to go, instead of one up, I'm going to go down but I'm not going to go a whole one down. I'm only going to go a third. Same thing in the other direction. Instead of going one to the left, one up, I'm going to go one to the left and head down, but only a third of the way. All right, let's do the next one. The next one says, if I go uh, from the original parabola, if I go two to the right, I will go four up. Well, let's go two to the right. Now, instead of going four up, I'm going to head down, but I'm only going to head down one third of the way. So what's one third of four? It's four thirds. So four thirds is one and a third. So instead of going down four, I'm going to go down one and a third. So here's two to the right, down one, down another third. And that's my point. You see this parabola is squished compared to that one here. And I'm going to have another one on the other side. Let's do one more with the three. It used to be that if I go to the right three, I'd have to go up nine. So instead, I'm going to go to the right three. I'm going to head down, but not nine, one third of nine. So what's one third of nine? It's three. So I'm going to go three to the right and three down. And on the other side, three to the left and three down. And now I've got this sort of wider, actually I should go, yeah, sort of wider parabola. Oops. Okay, and always write the equation next to the arrowhead. All right, and now you have it. Now that's, that's graphing. And finally, write an equation of a quadratic function with vertex negative 5, 4 and passing through the point 7, 1. All right. If I had, if I told you what the vertex was and I gave you a point on the parabola, there'd be only one possible parabola that you could draw. All right. That would define the entire parabola for you. What's happening here is this is asking algebra algebraically. So what's the equation? There's only, there's only one possible parabola. It could be at this vertex and passes through a particular point. So what we do algebraically is we start with the general equation in vertex form. Okay. Now, any point that is on the parabola will make this equation true. So if I put the vertex into this equation, then I still have an equation. And remember, the vertex is hk. Okay, so I can put in y equals a, so I don't know my a, but I do know hk. And so if h is negative 5, then I'm going to have a plus 5 here, and then plus 4. So that's my equation, but I don't know my a value, right? All equations will have x and y in it, but that's because it's a relationship between x and y, but I still have to figure out my a. If, if somebody gave me just a vertex, I couldn't draw the entire parabola because I don't know if it's wide or skinny or, or the same as y equals x squared. So I have to figure out what the a is. 
they're going to give me a point. So what I will do, because I know that the, this point will make the equation true, I'm going to sub in, sorry, this point will make the equation true, I'm going to sub in the point. And so this will be an x, and this will be the y of the point. And so I will have 1 equals a times 7 plus 5 squared plus 4. And now that I've done that, I have an equation that has all numbers, but it has a. So 1 equals a times 12 squared plus 4. I'm going to isolate a, so I'll bring the 4 over. So I'll have negative 3 equals 144a. And then a equals negative 3 over 144, and we can reduce that to 48. Negative 1 over 48. So therefore, the equation is y equals, okay, got to put in our a, bracket x now this is the h and this is the k and that's the equation in vertex form okay so you, we had the we had the vertex but it wasn't enough we had to also get the a all right so let's go on to the next thing Okay, graphing a parabola with the equation in factored form. Okay, so the graph of in factored form, it looks like this. You can tell that it's factored because it's written as something times something. All right, and so let's see what we know about it. So the graph of y equals x minus s times x minus t opens upward if, same thing, if the a is a positive number and downwards if a is a negative number. Now, the x-intercepts are actually in this equation in factored form. They are s and t. All right, so I'm going to draw it. I'll just draw any old parabola here. These are the x-intercepts. This is s and this is t. All right, the axis of symmetry is halfway between those points. So here's the axis of symmetry. This is the point S0, this is the point T0, and the axis of symmetry will go directly between them. Okay. We'll use the axis of symmetry. You know what? Just, just, uh, I'm going to leave this for a second, and let's, let's just play with the graph and come back and, and solve this. Uh, we'll, fit, we'll fill this in in a second. Let's say we're going to graph this. All right. So here's what we'll do. We say the x-intercepts are what? Right? The equation does have minus in here. So it's just these numbers that you see that are the x-intercepts. So in this case, the x-intercepts are 1 and 5. So I'm going to put them on the graph. 1 and 5. Now the axis of symmetry will go directly between 1 and 5. So it'll, be, it'll go through here. We say that the axis of symmetry goes through the average of 1 and 5, right? So, so the x-intercepts are, are 1 and 5. Axis of symmetry, you basically take the average of the two numbers. So it's 1 plus 5 divided by 2, right? Take an average, add them up, and divide by 2. Okay, so it's basically the average of the x-intercepts. So where is the vertex then, right? Where is the vertex going to be? Well, the vertex is either going to be somewhere up here on the, on the axis of symmetry or somewhere down here on the axis of symmetry. Now, can you take a guess if it's going to be up here or down here? So it is going to be up on here because look at the A value. The A value says we're going to open downwards. Okay, But it doesn't matter. We, we can figure that out in a minute. But the point is that the vertex sits on the axis of symmetry. So if the axis of symmetry is going to be the line x equals 3, then the vertex is going to be 3 something. 3 what? Well, we know the vertex is going to sit on this graph, so it's going to make the equation true. So we will sub x equals 3 into the equation to figure out what the y is. 
So if x is going to be 3, then I'm going to sub this in. So negative 2 times 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 5, and work out what that is. This is negative 2 times 2 times negative 2. So that's negative 4 times negative 2, so y equals 8. Therefore, the vertex is 3, 8. So now we have it. Okay, so I'm going to put that on 3, 8. And now I have three points. But a good graph actually has five points. So I'm going to see if I can get more. So think to last year. Is there another point that's easy to get from here? All right. And the, the easiest point is always an intercept. So let's find a y-intercept. We know it's going to be somewhere along here because it's going to open downwards. So let's find the y-intercept. I will sub x equals 0. And so I'm going to have y equals negative 2 times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 5. y equals negative 2 times negative 1 times negative 5. And I think that's negative 10. So the y-intercept is going to be negative 10. It sits right here. And I now have four points. I'm going to connect this end. How can I get another point? So I'd like to have five. And this is what I have so far. So hopefully you'll see that the fifth point's easy to get because it's the mirror point of the y-intercept using the axis of symmetry as the mirror. So if I'm three units to the left of axis of symmetry, I can go another three units to the right and find the mirror point. And that's the whole point of the symmetry. And I have this. And always label the equation next to the arrowhead. Okay. Now, finally, the, oh, I have to fill in this. So use the axis of symmetry to find the x coordinate of the vertex. To find the y coordinate of the vertex, sub the x coordinate into the equation. Right? That's what we did. And then find the y intercept by substituting x equals 0, and then to find the fifth point using the symmetry and the y-intercept. Last thing, write the equation of a quadratic function with x-intercept 6 and negative 5 and passing through the point 7, 1. Okay? So here we have our two intercepts. If I have two intercepts, I can't draw the entire parabola because I don't know if it's like going to go like this are going to go all the way up there, or if it's going to go the other way like this. So I really do need to find that a value. So let's do the same thing we did before. I'm going to write the general equation. I'm going to put in my x-intercepts. So I'm going to have y equals a, x minus 6. That one is going to be x minus negative 5, so x plus 5. I'm going to sub the point 7, 1. And I'm going to get 1 equals a times 7 minus 6, 7 plus 5. So 1 equals a times 1 times 12. 1 equals 12a. And so a is 1 over 12. So therefore, my equation is y equals 1 over 12, x minus 6, and x plus 5. Okay, so those are the three forms of the, of the quadratic function. We will have a part two of this with uh, lots more stuff from grade 10. Uh, I hope this made some sense. Please feel free to go back and review it slowly at your own pace, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.